agora vamos ver alguns exemplos, como o professor Manuel da Pinheiro referiu, de projetos passivos na Europa. Vamos ter três apresentações de vídeo e depois a apresentação do arquiteto do Júlio Riva, que está aqui presente e que fará uma apresentação. Será a final. A primeira apresentação é do Bjorn Kjerluf, com uma solução que depois podem ver também, na, ou que já certamente viram na, na exposição, e vamos passar a ver o vídeo. Hi, my name is Bjorn. I work in a small architectural studio called Createrra. Today I'm going to talk to you about what is our passion, passive house from natural materials. Here are some pictures from houses we have built with straw, clay and wood so far. They all have a different look, but are built from the same materials, ecococon straw panels. This is a view of what we are building this week. It is like playing with Lego. Everything fits perfectly and it is a lot of fun building. All this has been made possible by Ecococon straw panels. Ecococon has developed these panels for the last 10 years and dozens of houses are already built all over Europe. The panels are modular. We can adapt the panels to nearly any design you already have. There are standard panels, braced panels and columns, but also inclined panels and lintels above the windows. Each panel is load-bearing as well. The wooden construction is used for calculation, so for a structural engineer it is easy to dimension. Just watch the placement of this lintel. It fits perfectly and thanks to the integrated truss is fully load-bearing. Another huge advantage are the flat surfaces of the straw. It makes it easy to plaster with clay plaster. Because the surface is even, it saves material and time. Like this, a two-story building can be assembled in just a few days. Here is a picture of one of our houses the third day after construction start. Even people who originally do not think about straw buildings are quite impressed. After raising the walls, only the surfaces have to be finished. Inside we plaster with clay, directly on straw. On the outside we wrap the whole construction in an airtight but completely moisture permeable membrane. In cold climates, we add an extra wood fiber board on the outside. The membrane must be permeable for moisture with an SD value of less than 0.2 meters. We have verified this construction for cold and warm climates. With this wrapping method, it is easy to achieve air tightness demanded by the passive house standard. Here you see a picture from the building site. You can see the membrane protects the panels from rain during construction. Later we add the wood fiber port. In warm climates this is not really necessary. We always achieve blower door tests with results below 0.3 at 50 Pascal when we build in this style. So don't worry, air tightness is easier than you thought if you use our concept. But of course, a house needs to look good in the first place. There is absolutely no reason why it should not be possible to achieve good architectural design as well. We really think that the passive house standard is something natural that belongs to every house. It really depends only on the architect what he can make out of it. Of course, good detailing is important, such as achieving uh, good thermal bridging details. Here a detail with the roof overhang. As you can see, the C value for this roof overhang is fairly low. 
We have developed a catalog of details ready to download and use by architects. Now you just have to concentrate on the design. Here another building of ours at the foot of the Tatra mountains. This small house is simple and copies some of the traditional barn styles of the region. Only one small oven heats the house. If the sun shines, even the oven is not necessary. The large windows will heat the house by themselves and the heat distributes through the whole building thanks to the passive house standard. If you want to come and visit us, please do. Our office is the only load-bearing straw bale dome in the world. It was built under the guidance of Professor Gernot Minke in 2010. It is a true experimental building raised with the help of more than 30 workshop participants. Also with the help of one participant, Caterina Pinto from Portugal. Have a look into our studio. We are very fortunate to be able to work in such a nice environment. It inspires us to do even greater things tomorrow. I hope I have inspired you as well. Follow us on our website and on Facebook. And don't forget, you have a great representative of EcoCocon here in Portugal, Caterina Pinto from Terra Palfa. Do not hesitate to contact her during the conference. I wish you have an exciting conference with a lot of new information. Goodbye. Agora vamos ter a apresentação do Dieta Press. Neste caso é um caso muito particular que se trata de um museu em Ravensburg certificado passivo. Dear guests and members of the Portuguese Passive House Network, thank you for the invitation to give a short presentation about uh, the Art Museum of Ravensburg. It's the first passive house museum worldwide. Um, it's a result of an urban, urban design and architectural competition in the medieval city of Ravensburg. It's uh, in the region of um, Lake Constance in the southwest of Germany. Um, the architect won the competition with his um, perfect design. Also, uh, one target was it has to be integrated. It had to be integrated in the old town, and you can see this facade is done by um, bricks from an old monastery from Belgium. So it's recycled brick facade. A lot of people I know who visited the museum and the town they didn't recognize that this is this is an old building. They first thought it's this building uh, is one of the old one and not a new one only two years old. Uh, this museum won a lot of prizes, the German Prize for Architecture. Also one part was energy efficiency in this prize. It won the Passive House Award, the International Passive House Award for men, non-residential buildings. It won the prize for the best integrated design in Europe. And this year it was one of the five finishers of the Mies van der Rohe European Architectural Prize. So it won a lot of prizes because of the architecture and the combination of energy efficiency. This is one picture of the facade, the entry. Next picture, please. This is the other side, the entry with the revolving door. Here, a glass uh, part and the three stories of the, uh, this building. This building also has two stories. Um, underground carriage and three stories museum in the upper levels. Next. Some pictures from the inside, very good design. So the building is completely designed by the architect in and outside. Next. You can also see it here. This is the entry, the ground floor. Here is the counter where the museum visitors have to pay. And this is the second floor, the main room with the main 
uh, exhibition of this museum. Um, the museum is uh, part of the Selinka um, family. Selinka uh, was a, um, a rich uh, family in Ravensburg and they gave uh, the whole uh, exhibition as a present to the town of Ravensburg. Next one. You can see the uh, underground garage. Um, very uh, complicated to make the foundations with drills and concrete. So the most of the heat bridges of the building, 80% of the heat bridges is the foundation. The rest um, ha had to be had to, to be solved in the in the three upper stores stories. Next one. Um, you can see um, this is the, the ceiling above the underground car park carriage. Um, we tried to um, fix it with less fixings and as much as possible insulation. Uh, so we used special equipment um, used for um, this um, ceiling insulations. The thickness of the insulation in the ceiling is 26 centimeters to the underground garage. Next one. This is also a special connection this, um, for the brick facade. This um, first we tried to develop one and then after some research we found this bracket uh, from um, companies Motorson. Uh, it's stainless steel. Here is the brick facade. Here is the 24 centimeters insulation with mineral fiber and here is the concrete wall where the whole uh, building is uh, mounted on. Here you can see the concrete and the, the steel, thick, steel parts to fix the, the bricks uh, with, a, with a concrete wall. Next one. The architect wanted to, to have visible concrete inside, so the ducts, because of the, the thick insulation, it was possible to install the ducts for the ventilation system outside. This is one of the um, um, marvelous parts in this uh, museum. You, 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 uh, everywhere we have this uh, perfect uh, visible concrete walls. Next one. The revolving door was another part to solve. There was no revolving door existing, uh, airtight and uh, insulated enough for uh, uh, energy efficient building and um, not for a passive house. So we uh, developed a door um, with a producer, uh, airtight and high efficient in the energy uh, consumption, less with less energy consumption. These are some designs reduced on edges and uh, areas, how we calculated the bridges of the revolving door. Next one. So the air tightness test was done with the blower door equipment in the main door, not in the revolving door. So the revolving door was included and the result, the calculation was 0.6, you know, from passive house and 50, 0.6 is standard and 50% uh, less at uh, the museum in the first measure, uh, short before the museum was opened. Next one. Uh, this is the detail of the attic. Um, Standard, as you know, the thickness of the, the roof is 30 centimeters, and these um, uh, parts, concrete parts on the roof, are covered also with this insulation to make it heat bridges free. The technology of a museum is very complicated because uh, in museums, the room temperature in 365 uh, days. A year has to be very in a in a very little uh, difference, so 20 to 24 degrees uh, all over day and night of the year uh, uh, had to be endured, and the humidity also 50% plus minus 5%, and this is very difficult. So you need a very a good equipment, and so passive house in the technology is not not so difficult to. Um, solve because you need a very efficient uh, technology for heating, for cooling, for humidification and dehumidification. The heat comes from a gas absorption heat pump with 40 kW and uh, with borehole um, heat exchanger uh, 15 kW. This is three drills um, with each 
300, 100 meter. Next one. Um, the concrete core, uh, temperature control with a, with a brick, with um, concrete ceilings, um, is one part of the system. The next one, um, for heating and cooling, the next one. Um, and the supply and return temperatures are around uh, 35 to 28 degrees, so low temperature all over the building for heating and cooling. Next one. The same. Next one. Um, the domestic hot water was de decentralized by mounted bo boilers with um, electric, electric uh, energy because there is very less domestic hot water to be used in a museum only in uh, the bathrooms. Next one. So, next one. Okay. Next one. You can see this. This is a, a large unit for Minerga. This is uh, normally used for for buildings with these high requirements in climate. It's a heat and moisture recovery system with 90% uh, real uh, heat recovery in reality. Next one. Also, in addition, for VOC and CO2 sensors to bring uh, to control the, the, the air quality by these sensors to have always very less um, energy um, demand in the house de de uh, de depending on how um, dense it is used by the, by the visitors. And the visitors are the main heating in the building. If there is very less visitors, uh, it's um, um, very less ventilation, only uh, uh, very little volumina, and as more people are in the museum, as more the ventilation system and volumina goes up. Next one. Next one. So the recirculation mode uh, depends on the um, density of use of the building. Next one. So this is 20 to 24 degrees uh, is the supply temperature of the air. So it's a little uh, after heated. Um, and um, it can be brought, uh, brought up to a peak of 35 degrees to bring the air preheated pre into the rooms. Next one. Next one. So humidification, dehumidification is necessary to keep this 50% uh, humidity in the rooms. Um, so the brain uh, geothermal heat exchanger is for the preheating um, to bring it up to um, um, maximum 7 degrees. The lighting is also very efficient, which presents the detectors, ambient light sensors, fluorescent lights, uh, single spotlights, and LEDs. So, in comparison to other German uh, new built museums, uh, this museum saves 60% of total energy consumption and 70% of the final energy heating consumption. So, it's uh, well, far better than the, uh, the German building standard. So, to the end, some information. So what we did in this project, we are not the architects, we are the engineers, the passive house designer engineers. So we are involved in buildings normally with the PHPP, the thermal bridges, how to develop the construction, how to use which, which components to use, um, to um, uh, uh, guide the tendering, performance descriptions, the performance directory, we train the team, the architects, also the craftsmen, and we make the quality assurance with uh, thermodynamic uh, um, measurements and lower door, and also the building site, uh, accompanying the building site managers. This is our Passive First yeah. Consulting. And the Passive First Consulting has one main thing. A lot, often the, the, the buildings are getting more and more expensive as more uh, developed they are. Uh, we try in the passive house consulting to bring it up to a cost, cost effective part, but to keep the level of passive house. Not to go down with the passive house, to keep the level, but to bring the costs in a range uh, that's effective and um, affordable for the client and users. Next one. The 500 million building costs we accompanied in the last years, more than 1,500 living, living quarters and with different clients, teams, pilot projects. This is 800 flats in Innsbruck, Passive First Standard. This is the first prison in Passive First Standard. This is the first, first courthouse in Passive First Standard. This is in Vienna, and this is Innsbruck um, in Tirol.
next one. These are buildings we are doing now, or we did in the last years, to see um, which um, wide range of buildings, old you know, pro protected buildings, uh, NFIT buildings, uh, high-rise buildings, all Passive House certified, NFIT certified. This is the Passive House Plus, next one. This is the Kindergarten, Olympic Village, Roden Areal, Office Building, seven hotels we did in Passive House Standard certified. And this is our team. So this to the end, this is the first Passive House Plus in our region. You may hear in this uh, conference about the new Passive House classes. This is the first one, certified in, eight, in, the, in September this year. And uh, the next one is the first Passive House Premium Worldwide. It's also in our, our region, it's certified uh, some days ago. Um, and you can read it worldwide in the press and in the newsletters of the networks about these buildings. Uh, we certified and accompanied this building. Mas depois toda, toda, todas as apresentações estão gravadas e estas apresentações depois vão estar disponíveis no nosso site. Agora vamos ver um vídeo muito mais curto do Francesco Nesi, do Zefir, que é a organização em Itália. Sono Francesco Nesi, direttore di Zephyr Passive House Italia. Oggi siamo qua a presentarvi uno dei più grandi cantieri eh, realizzati in Italia con lo standard Passive House. L'edificio che si tratta della ristrutturazione ed ampliamento di un edificio polifunzionale chiamato La Providenza a Pergine e Basciugana. Il committente di quest'opera è la parrocchia di Pergine. Il progetto eh, ha previsto la ristrutturazione secondo standard passive house del corpo frontale dell'edificio con eh, ampliamento retrostante e la particolarità dell'edificio che ha consentito di arrivare alla certificazione passive house sta nella robustezza degli interventi legati all'imbolo protermico che in sintesi sono stati relativi all'applicazione di un capotto termoisolante su tutta la superficie esterna dell'edificio, affrontando eh, per la parte vecchia uno dei principali problemi iniziali legato alla presenza di cornici in pietra, I, il fatto di aver installato un capotto termoisolante su tutto l'esterno dell'edificio ha permesso anche di installare i nuovi serramenti a triplo vetro. <coughs> in modo corretto per limitare al massimo il ponte termico e quindi eh, entro lo strato del cappotto. Trattandosi di edificio eh, progettato con protocollo passivo house è stato previsto degli impianti di ventilazione meccanica controllata a tutta aria. Questa impiantistica è stata approfondita in modo tale da garantire la massima efficienza. Ecco qua la macchina principale, vediamo i circuiti idraulici di riscaldamento della batteria di posto riscaldamento e abbiamo anche il circuito idraulico vincolato per la batteria di pre riscaldamento queste tubazioni non sono ancora isolate in quanto siamo proprio in fase di collaudo e dal punto di vista idraulico dopodiché si completerà anche la termoregolazione in fondo dopo la macchina vediamo la centralina di teleriscaldamento questa è la centralina di teleriscaldamento nella potenza di 50 kW Qui siamo al secondo piano dove si vedono le VMC di portata modesta di circa 350 metri cubi ora. Una problematica caratteristica degli interventi sull'esistente è quella legata alla presenza inevitabile di alcuni ponti termici. Nel caso specifico, eh, soprattutto la, la tappa tra le strutture e il suolo ha determinato dei ponti termici L'importanza di questo fabbricato è effettivamente molto elevata per tutti noi in Italia, per tutti noi professionisti, perché ci dimostra che anche sulle ristrutturazioni si possono raggiungere prestazioni effettivamente eccellenti 
e in questo caso siamo arrivati addirittura a certificarla con lo standard passive house, quindi i rigidi requisiti eh, validi a livello internazionale qua in Italia sono stati proprio adottati e non solo la ristrutturazione con standard NFIT ma proprio passive house. Hello, um, my name is uh, Julien Riva, I'm a French architect and um, first um, I've been asked to, to send a video, but as my English is quite poor, I thought it was better to come, and then if you don't understand, you can ask questions. <laughs> so, uh, the building I'm going to present uh, is my own studio. Uh, it's an old building which was uh, built in the early 20th century, in Saint-Étienne. Saint-Étienne is a town in uh, the center of France, uh, nearby Lyon. Um, it's very cold in, uh, in winter and very hot in summer, so we have uh, uh, both difficulty. So, as you can see, um, the building is situated here and uh, it was located in a big manufacturer called Manu France. When uh, Manu France disappeared uh, in uh, 1980, uh, the building was the first uh, retrofit without any thermal consideration, as you can see on the thermal picture here. It was like that in uh, 2012 when I bought the building. You can see inside, sometimes there was insulation and sometimes not. Um, there is one very important thing. Uh, it's the, the building was uh, listed uh, with the, by the Monument de France. So you can change uh, the outside. Uh, I decided a concept which is box within a box to avoid thermal bridge. So as you can see here, uh, we did a wooden box with a wooden beam and a wooden fiber. I was lucky because uh, during the first retrofit, the floor doesn't touch the wall. I mean, here the concrete doesn't touch the stone, so we can put insulation here to avoid the thermal bridge. On this picture, uh, you see several things. The first one, uh, it's the insulation. Uh, I mean, there is, uh, there's a little mistake here, it's not 24, but 26 centimeters of wooden fiber. You can see that beam are not localized at the same place to avoid um, a thermal bridge by the wooden beam. Here, there's an airtightness membrane, which is called Intello, and here there is another one, uh, which is called Solitex. When you put internal insulation, um, it's very dangerous because you can have moisture problem and uh, humidity and condensation right here because the outside world is very cold. So uh, we checked that with Wi-Fi and the problem was really important and it, the problem was weird here. So we decided to create here an air edge 
going from the, the ground to the floor. So here you have three centimeters all over the building and that's why there is two membranes um, that don't breathe by the, uh, the same. I mean that this one doesn't breathe, or very few, and this one breathes really, really more. So it's, uh, it gets, it's, it's easy and it gets easier and easier for the humidity uh, when it's going outside. So you don't capture the humidity here, but uh, you make the, humid the humidity going outside with this air age. Another thing you can see is the position of the window. Of course, if you want to be e uh, efficient, it's really better to put the window here because you have to make the, a good line uh, between the windows and the insulation. As the building is listed, I can't uh, put um, I, I can't put in the windows here, so I have to put it here to to because uh, to, to keep the same view as it, was, as it was before. So we had to put a good insulation here, and it was quite hard. Here you can see some picture of the wooden fiber and the wooden beam. This is the uh, Solitex membrane, here. Yeah. And then here you can see the Intello membrane. On this picture, uh, you can see a mistake. Um, all the blue point, I don't know if you can see them, uh, a worker uh, thought that it was better to put some more nail on the, one, on the airtight net membrane. Of course it was a mistake and it took two hours to make the mistakes and two days to repair it. Um, on Passivao's uh, construction, you have to really, really take care and uh, to really inform workers because they are not um, really used to do uh, such uh, thing. So sometimes they think they are doing something well and it's not the case. Yeah, on this picture, uh, you see uh, the warming floor. Uh, in most passive house building, uh, you warm the building with the air. Uh, here, it was not a good solution because in the open space, uh, there's a really, really big volume. And so you can't warm this volume with the uh, new air. You have to insufflate a lot of um, air. So it was better to warm with this duct. And it's also useful in summer to cool the building. Here you can see um, the heat pump. It uh, works with a borehole. Here you can see the high efficiency, high, uh, sorry, uh, the, vent the motorized ventilation with heat recovery. And this part is quite interesting because it works with borehole. And uh, in uh, winter, these uh, things uh, avoid uh, to defrost the high uh, the, uh, heat recovery. So it's quite interesting. And in summer, uh, with borehole, you can refresh uh, the new hair, so it's quite comfortable. Here you can see some value. Um, we have 2,000 cubic meters, and uh, we, the heat consumption is uh, with PHPP uh, 14, and in reality we have, uh, I think, 13 kilowatts per mètre carré per year. Uh, the N50 value, the heat pump is uh, 10 kilowatt hour. Um, we divided by 14 uh, the, the energy from the first retrofit uh, to nowadays. Here's the project today. We have uh, monitoring to uh, 
uh, check if the, um, the building uh, works okay. So uh, here you can see a problem this time. This is the elevator. It's for disabled people, so we don't use it every day. And as you can see, it's not so efficient. 100 watts 24 7. So we decided to change some value, and uh, today it's only 20 watts. So it's really better because you will see on the final picture that this line at the end of the year is really big. Here you can see the yellow line. Um, it's the light consumption and uh, it changes often because we have um, a little uh, machine that calculates how many uh, lights you have to put in the office to have um, a good comfort for working. So when uh, there's a, um, a cloud, it's bigger, and when uh, it's sunny, it's uh, de decreased. Uh, here you see um, a snowy day. It was in November uh, two, two, two years ago. Uh, this part has been uh, retrofit, and this part is a restaurant uh, with, which has not been uh, retrofit. And you see, seven days uh, later, there's no more snow here. Um, on this picture, uh, you can see that uh, the insufflated uh, air is very comfortable. Um, despite the, so, uh, the value, we, this is the outside air, and this is the inside air, and this, the difference here is very low. And you see, there is a bigger difference here. This is get with the borehole I should speak before. On this picture, uh, this part is quite interesting because you see that about 50% of the consumption um, is uh, with a computer. And the warming system is only 25%. And the elevator I've spoken before is here. So you see 100 watts 24 seven is really big for such a building. So if you have any question. Yes, of course. <laughs> and they suggest something for this, or they approve and they accept your proposals? It was not, it was not so easy, because uh, first uh, they didn't really understand uh, what I wanted to do, because uh, um, they have never heard about passive house before. Uh, what I remember was the, the restaurant uh, was retrofit uh, in 2010. And the, the owner of the restaurant changed the windows. It was the really old windows. And um, the part uh, I was working on didn't add any more the old windows. And when I visit the Monument de France, uh, I explained my project and they told me, yes, you're an architect. Why don't you uh, create the old windows. <laughs> so it was really hard to hear that because uh, they let the, the restaurant owner uh, destroy these windows two years before. And uh, I had to speak a lot and a lot of the project and then they realized and they 
let me change the windows uh, with new one, but it was only windows of the 80s, so it was, they had no interest, no inter historical interest. Uh, and it's amazing because you do a box, inside a box is a little bit expensive, a little bit. It's more or less 1,200 uh, yeah. euros by square meter. Yeah, it, uh, it's the price, but... Say, do we have any idea about what will be the, the payback of your proposal? Yeah, um, this price is uh, a normal price in France and um, it's about uh, the extra cost is about uh, 65 70 thousand uh, euro more and uh, the, the extra cost uh, has a return on 12 or 13 years so it's quite short because uh, it's very cold and uh, very hot uh, in Saint Etienne uh, this summer, uh, we have uh, 15 days over 38 and uh, we keep inside a temperature of 25 degrees for only 0.5 euro a day. So it's uh, really comfortable, even in summer. Well, let me thank uh, Julien for the presentation. Uh, it's a very nice project. Thank you. Thank you.